And a good Saturday afternoon to you. Roger Hill of Weathering Heights. Weathering Heights Consulting, Velco Weather Hazards Forecaster. A couple things I want to show you here with a broad view of the uh, Western Hemisphere. Uh, this is Africa, the coast of Africa. We have a pretty strong easterly wave that just moved off the coast of Africa. National Hurricane Center says there's something that could develop here uh, in days to come, a long ways out. It could be even two weeks before you have to worry about that. Of course, in the tropics and all the weather news is Dorian, now a major category uh, uh, three or four hurricane, and uh, expected to be a Cat 4 uh, taking a track, approaching the uh, northern Bahamas, and then slowing down before weather systems to its north begin to adjust and then this uh, latest track is right along the U.S. coast and then out to sea a little bit and into the Canadian Maritimes. It does not look like it's going to affect New England at this point but uh, something we'll have to keep a close eye on and uh, this would be late in the week next week and toward next weekend. In the meantime we have uh, a lot of frontal systems working on through and it looks like Above normal precipitation is expected according to the uh, European model with uh, the latest information slightly above normal for most of the state of Vermont in terms of precipitation ending by Friday at around 2 o'clock in the morning. In this look you can see of course Hurricane Dorian uh, category 4 and again the uh, track is going to take it toward the northern Bahamas and then a little bit more out to sea and uh, it could be major threat is about all at this point in time. So we are looking at uh, Dorian's changes uh, with uh, slowing down in the vicinity of the northern Bahamas. It's still a major land threat to the uh, southeast United States, including much of eastern Florida. And looking at the 500 hectopascal heights, or and the main takeaway here is we have kind of a west-northwesterly flow, a very zonal, very flat, and uh, a little bit of a ridge off to the west as you go down in a little more uh, southern latitudes and a little bit of a shortwave trough here. And this has spun up uh, a few areas of uh, showers and even a few thunderstorms. Our uh, main weather is going to be coming uh, from Canada. And this is going to be along, right along the U.S.-Canadian border into southern Canada as the main flow for us. And that's going to bring slightly cooler weather. And indeed, we have an area of higher pressure building into the Great Lakes. And a little bit more cloudy, uh, cloudiness uh, today, but uh, that clears out tonight. And we're looking at better conditions during the day tomorrow before some high clouds begin to creep in from this next weather system. This is a Monday's weather system, which will then track into the region. And then that will be followed by uh, better conditions on Tuesday. And then uh, Wednesday we have another weather system we'll have to deal with at that point in time. Let's take a look at precipitable water. Precipitable water is a, a very good uh, metric taking a look at the flow and fluids, the fluid dynamics of weather. In the blue, we have generally drier than normal weather. That's what's moving across Vermont currently. I uh, want to also call your attention to Dorian, which is right here. This is a concentrated precipitable water, of course, in the white. That's like five sigma standard deviation. So uh, taking a look at that, you can see it hits toward northern uh, portions of the Bahamas, and then it comes to a halt and just spins. Meanwhile, Back up uh, to the north here, Monday, Labor Day, we have uh, about one to two, almost two sigma standard deviation. Really not a big deal, but we could see some locally heavy showers and thunderstorms associated with this. And uh, then running this a little bit further along, you can see what Dorian does. It just kind of sits there. We get into better conditions on Tuesday with that lighter blue color there and drier conditions before the next frontal system begins to hook up. And it's relatively narrow, but it's a little bit more uh, accentuated in terms of the uh, higher amounts of moisture here, about one to two standard deviations. And that moves on through on Wednesday with showers and thunderstorms, some of which could be locally heavy. Look at Dorian off the, the Georgia coast, uh, south of Charleston, east of Savannah. And Dorian will then take a track right along the North Carolina coast. And uh, it's it's going to be a, a nightmare for some parts of the Carolinas there watching Dorian as it stalls and then knowing that it's going to make that coastal track. And then it moves out to sea, it looks like, and it's going to be east of Cape Cod and take its precipitation with it until it hits Nova Scotia. By that time, uh, Dorian's lost a lot of punch. It's just an extra tropical low and a regular kind of nor'easter, if you will. Now, just backing this up, I want to show you that the uh, conditions are such that that uh, area of higher pressure associated with that blue is going to be a critical. That is right here. We're looking at an area of higher pressure that's going to build in, and this is going to deflect.
Dorian out to sea, and the flow of air is generally out of the west, and that's a good sign. We don't want any big ridges uh, like this with a big trough coming in at that point because that could deflect Dorian and then move it into New England. But right now, it is looking pretty good. Again, we're talking uh, no real issues until we get into about Thursday. Looking at the GFS Ensemble, you can see dry weather up through uh, uh, into um, Sunday night. And tomorrow night, Monday, is our Labor Day is our next shot of precipitation. Looks kind of like a double deal here. And then we dry out as we get into Tuesday, and then Wednesday is the next threat, and then we dry out thereafter. Looking at the total amount of uh, QPF, um, it's uh, relatively healthy amounts here is what we're looking at, with uh, somewhere anywhere between that first uh, amount here, closer to about a half inch, and another maybe three quarters of an inch on top of that for a total of around 1.3. And then continuing, you put the other ones together here, and we're talking up around 1.82 inches. And this matches up fairly nicely with what the European model has been showing us. And looking at precipitable water, you can see a definite uptick there, 1.4 uh, on uh, Monday, and then uh, somewhere around 1.4, 1.5. This, uh, again, matches up very nicely with the European model. Uh, switching over to temperature, 2-meter temperatures right now are looking like a little bit of a warm-up as we head into the uh, around the 4th or so. And uh, we'll climb out of the uh, 60s, and we'll see temperatures in the 70s, then a little bit of a drop, and then up and down as we go. Nothing extreme, nothing major. And dew point temperatures with the possibility of thunderstorms on Monday, and nothing on Tuesday, and then the next one returns on Wednesday. And then we have a real cool, drier drop here that's going to move on in, and that's going to affect us on uh, Thursday and Friday late next week. We're looking at the seven-day total QPF by the Weather Prediction Center, and you can see the effects of Dorian going out to sea here. You can also see our northern latitude precipitation uh, across southern Canada and then across northern New England. Temperatures will range anywhere from near normal to about three degrees below normal. And three days later, we're looking at the high temperatures ranging anywhere from normal to about three degrees below normal. Latest National Weather Service track of Dorian in the tropics. Major hurricane, anything above a Cat 3, and continuing that major hurricane to off the coast. And then it begins to weaken to a standard hurricane around a 1, and uh, taking it like that. Here's Dorian with the 11 a.m. update. And then here is what we have the uh, next potential producing a little bit of uh, potential there, a threat to the next easterly wave coming off the west coast of Africa. That's a long ways out, and who knows, it might even swing out to sea and head out in the middle of part of the Atlantic. That's it from here. Roger Hill, Weathering Heights. Thanks for watching.